Uh, what I'm going to say is, uh, by way of uh, just exploratory probing, I'm not trying to package up definitive opinions, which I'm expecting you to swallow at all. I'm tossing them out to you as an uh, invitation to participate. And let me suggest as an opening pitch that we are seated here with a very delightful situation on the very verge of a very large changeover in our entertainment industry. Uh, it's uh, like many large changes hidden till the last moment, but the uh, American public is uh, about to enter the entertainment industry as participant. That is, the audience is about to become workforce. I'll just list a few of the major flips that the whole establishment is in a posture to do in the next few months, as it were, and certainly a few years. And I would mention that as what probably the most spectacular flip that will occur in the next few, well, months, two or three years. And it uh, has been held up by strange accidents, as, for example, the uh, misunderstanding of the quiz shows. The quiz shows uh, of lamentable fate were a time when the American public had a sense of involvement in the show was participant in the show, and then suddenly they felt they'd been cheated and left out because of the rigging. Now, the possibility of the whole audience in prime time participating in the uh, top-level solution of top technical problems uh, is so obvious as to, again, it's rather breathtaking to think of why it hasn't been pursued. But it is conceivable in the very near future that the whole American public will be invited in prime time to participate in the solution of top problems in science. Robert uh, Oppenheimer is fond of saying their kids playing here on the sidewalk could solve some of my toughest problems in physics because they have methods, modes of sensibility that I lost 40 years ago. Now, why not invite these uh, uh, hopscotches and uh, uh, play kids into uh, the inner sanctum of physics by briefing in prime time on top level problems in the sciences uh, because what uh, eight or nine scientists might not be able to solve at any particular moment would not be too difficult for 10 or 30 or 40 million people to solve in a few seconds if given the problems there's a book by um, thomas kuhn uh, called the structure of scientific Re scientific revolutions in which he observes that science is not discovery oriented it's his theme of the whole book. Science makes discoveries, but it's not especially keen about this. Scientists have, as he points out, through, through 2,500 years of Western history, uh, tended to oppose all scientific discovery whenever it has been made. This is human. It isn't really scientific or unscientific. It's just human. People don't like anything new, anything that requires adjustment. There's a book by Owen Barfield called Saving the Appearances, in which he points out that one of the peculiarities of our Western world is that by means of alphabet, we have enabled ourselves to detach ourselves from the world. Uh, we, unlike all tribal societies, we are not involved. Tribal societies are involved. Participation mystique. The world of the mystical participation in the cosmos, in the universe, it goes with all pre-literate worlds. And in the literate world, you have for the first time in Greece and so on, since you have a habit of detachment, of non-involvement, of non-participation, which is a, a kind of unfriendly and uncooperative, uninvolving gesture toward the universe. And this has been the uh, basis of all Western society. All Western society has grown on this wonderful power of Western man to refuse to be involved in the world he lives in. Detachment. Objectivity. 